Hey everybody, Happy New Year. Here's to every one of you getting a big buck in 2024. You know, most people nowadays study maps and they'll take their little Spartan Forge app and they'll find an island, they'll find a saddle, they'll find a, a little bench and they'll go, oh, I got it now, buck's mine. And they'll go out there and go in and hunt that just based on that map. And hey, more power to them, but it's a long, hard road if that's what you're doing. You're gonna kill bucks just because you're hunting the right features and stuff, but you're gonna kill a lot less of them than a guy who does his homework. You gotta put on a detective hat. You need to know when they're bedding there, why they're bedding there, how they're bedding there, and exactly how to strike. You need to know your access in, you need to know which trees to get into, you need to know how close. You need to get out there and spring scout and really look at the beds from a whole different perspective. Look at them as the detective. Hey, I can tell there's a bed between these trees because there's a high spot. You see all this thick cover of water. And here's the bed, you see that? Right between these trees, and you see it's worn into the ground, so it's been used a lot. And uh, you can see a rub tree right there in the bed. And then a trail going in and out, escape trail. The trail we came in on, there's a trail going in and out there, too, and there. Um, and some might consider this a, a wind-based bed, because anybody walking up there is gonna smell, right? If it's a westerly wind, which it usually is. But I'd be willing to bet when that buck's in the area, he'll bed this on different winds. So when I look at this bed, um, you know, when you think about the way we came in here, through the muck and through the brush and through the thickness, Hunter Axis is over there. Now this is the typical, what you'd see in a sound-based bedding area, where he's gonna be in this hole, especially earlier in the season when this grass is real high, he'll be sitting right here out of the water and nothing can get at him. A coyote, a person, or anything is going to make a ton of noise getting near here, and he's going to hear them. Sound-based. However, they like to put the odds in their, their favor. And if you look at this transition, this transition is on the downwind side of the woodlot where everybody enters, and everybody walks up and down in here hunting. Not many people come back into this crap, but they get pretty close. So this buck bedding in here... You know, he's got a rub right there. He's got exit trails all over the place, an escape trail back into the nasty. Um, it looks like a sound-based bed, but I really believe that a little bit has to do with he can smell you coming. A lot of these bucks set up to catch you. They smell you coming. Cool bed. Let's see if we can find any more and see if they're similar along this transition. We're a little further down from where the other bed was. And that wood lot is right over there where all the hunters access and move around. West wind comes like this. And right where we're at right here, I mean, you gotta come through some water and stuff to get back here. Here's a pretty big bed right here that, I mean, literally, I mean, they smell that people are moving around there, so it's got a smell advantage. They know somebody's over there, right? But a predator could come in from different ways and get Adam in the bed. So it's not really wind specific, but it's using the wind as an advantage to know when there's somebody over there. He's got this little blockade of brush back here. So something can't just jump through at him, right? And he's gonna sit right there, right? He's got another bed right there. You can just kind of barely see by that tree. That one's not used as much. And then there's a bed right here that's pretty big and pretty well used. And if you look, you can see the ice is all broken and there's deer tracks going through here. So there's probably more beds around there. So we're probably in a little bit of a bedding area. So now this, if a guy was gonna hunt it, he'd hunt it on an off wind, like blowing like this. And he'd sit in one of these trees over here, overlooking this grass. And you'd have to be pretty quiet getting in. But literally, if you're up in there on this trail, you're gonna watch that deer get up and come out of here. You probably, you know, earlier in the season when this grass is higher, you're not gonna see him stand up, but you're gonna start hearing some slosh in here and you're gonna see him about right there, about 10 yards out of the bed coming at you. And uh, same thing this time of the year, 
he'd probably swivel his head around to see you climbing the tree. But uh, later on in the year, you know, when his grass is, I mean, earlier in the year when his grass is higher and green and his leaves and his brush, he's not going to see you. Now, this few beds in here doesn't interest me a lot, especially knowing there's a lot of hunting right there. If there was big sign in here, if I was seeing huge rubs and stuff, I might look a little closer. Now, there were some big rubs further up, but uh, that seemed to be on a rut rub line, you know, and it didn't seem to be about these beds. I mean, even these little trees here aren't rubbed. I mean, walking through here, there's a few rubs on little saplings. Looks like a year and a half, two-year-old bucks. Not interested. So we'll keep looking, but it's interesting to see how these beds work and how these deer work this land. How they go to the downwind sides of these islands and these access points. How they watch the people coming in. Right now I'm in the middle of a huge like a swamp that is all tags and dogwood and uh, fragmites and everything in here is underwater. I'm just looking for little patches of trees that can support a little high ground but there really isn't any way to even hunt this. And I think because of how thick and vast this is, there's a lot of reason there's big bucks back here. But you get back here and you don't see a lot of big buck sign. So um, I want to get through this and look at what the other side where people aren't getting, because people aren't walking through this to hunt the other side. They just, they wouldn't go through the trouble. It's just really pretty hard to get through this stuff. But I did find uh, this one high tree here and uh, figured there'd be some beds there. And I just wanted to walk past and look at them. And I found this rub right on the trail with broken tracks underneath it. And the, um, the, the uh, shavings are actually laying on top of the ice. So it's really fresh. Um, yeah, that was just done not too long ago. The ice is broken. That, w that ice was uh, water about five days ago. So... Um, we're finding fresh buck sign back here, but not old buck sign. And the reason is, try to put antlers to this brush. It's not easy, but right now, that whole woods is wide open and just full of deer hunters. So they ain't got no choice but to come back here. But this is what's keeping them alive. You know, you wonder what it would sound like when a deer runs through here. You kind of see, look at the broken branches here. And that's gotta be from Trying to get a rack through here at some point. But I would say the majority of really big bucks are probably out in this crap right now. There's actually, there's food, there's dogwood here. You can see the tip of that piece of dogwood is chewed on. Um, so they're out here feeding and living, just waiting for next year in this stuff. This, I mean, you couldn't drive this stuff. You couldn't, there's no way to kill these big bucks. And that's why there's so many big bucks on this particular public property. This is what you got to kind of seek out is these areas or these properties that have areas or are adjacent to areas where people can't kill all the bucks, where bucks can go hide and live forever because, you know, they might have a good hiding spot where you have a hard time killing them, but you ain't going to kill them if they don't exist. And they exist on properties that have hiding places. And the, this is a spot where I doubt people get where I'm standing very often at all. It was hell getting through this. I mean, I literally got to pound through this kind of crap to get back here. But I just want to see what's on the other side. And I might, if I find the right sign, hunt a few times on the other side um, next year. But I mean, it will not be easy. It won't be easy getting the deer out. It won't be easy getting back there. But that's the kind of stuff we do to be successful on public land. We go where hunters don't go. You know, there's a good chance you get over there and the people who live on the other side use the public like their own property and go out there like crazy and are all over the place. But you don't know unless you look. And right now, um, with my rabbit squirrel gun in hand, it's a good time to take a walk over there and look. Now we've gone about, uh, I don't know, a half mile, maybe a little less than a half mile through this stuff, which is a long ways. This is pretty thick crap. But we're starting to bust towards the other end. Um, we still got a long ways to go, 
But as we're getting through that really heavy stuff, we're starting to come into a little more grass, a little less reeds, and a couple more trees. Like you see these trees here? And underneath those trees are high spots. And that's where beds are gonna start. And now you're getting open enough that some of these trails can support a deer's rack, especially earlier in the season or in velvet. And now we're finding beds under these trees. Now you can see these trees in the distance, so you know where to look. And any place you see a bunch of these trees, you don't even have to look at them, you can just assume that there's a, uh, you know, like 10 of them in an area where everything else is this alders. Under those trees is where there's gonna be a bedding area. And you can look around the outsides for how they come in and out. Now a bed like this, wind has absolutely no bearing. Now obviously if they smell you coming, they're out of here. But this is completely sound based. Um, earlier in the year, this will be a wall of grass. These trees will be green. Part of the desire of bedding right underneath this tree is the leaf cover is gonna have a little cave here. And uh, this is a good spot for a, for a deer to lay. But what I don't see is any rubs. I don't see any rubs at all. So it doesn't have me too excited. I haven't seen a rub in a while. Not since we were in the area way over on the other side. So I'm still gonna keep looking. I'm gonna look at where these trees, I, we've got this stand of trees. We're gonna follow this towards the mainland where they'd go for crops, towards the private on the other side, and see if we develop rub lines, if we develop any sign of big bucks, and decide if that needs a hunt or not. So, um, It'd be hell getting back here, and I can't come this way. I'd walk right through the beds. So it'd be a long, long trek back here. But that's what we do, right? <laughs> All right, so now we've gotten through the tag alders and got to where we could see there was a few trees real close to the woods that is private. And now we have some spots where some big bucks can walk in thick cover and not tangle their antlers. And here's a rope in a bed right here. A worn bed. And it's not a big diameter, but it's a little higher up. It's at least a two year old. Not huge, but I'd be willing to bet there's a lot more in here. Now, this bed here, you know, is definitely not wind specific. The wind is not blowing from where the hunters are, which is on the private land. And, uh, it is just a high spot out of the water with high grass around it. So if you put your detective hat on, what time is he bedding here? You know, number one, you look at this uh, rub, it is drier than a cracker fart, but it's this year's. This one too, it's done this year, but at the whole end is dry. That was done probably in September. Now you look at this bed, and although it's packed to the ground, you can see all kinds of twigs and stuff that have fallen in it over time. So the time period that this was used was really earlier in the season, probably September, early October. And there's still heavy trails coming in here, so there's a time period when this was used quite a bit. But it certainly wasn't recently. So that's where you gotta put your detective hat on, say why, when, where, how, you know, not just I found a bed, where do I sit? You gotta look into it a little more. When he's bedding here, what are his food sources? Well, I do know that there's corn up on the private land. There's clover, there's acorns right here and right there. And uh, those acorns, man, that could be early season. Um, the clover could be early season. But uh, I think the main reason he beds here is the cover. And that cover's gone. When he's sitting in here and this is a, uh, this grass is this high and green, he's in like a little cave. There's leaves on these bushes around him. And anything sloshes through this water anywhere in here. And he hears it coming and he's gone. Or he's gone. It's a good spot at that time of the year. Right now it's not because literally as soon as I step into the brush here, he pops up, I can see him. You know, he's a little more exposed. He's a little more open. They don't like bedding in direct sunlight. Right now he's in direct sunlight. There's no leaf cover. The other bed is about uh, 50 yards that way. And I gravitated to this area because of these high trees. Uh, figuring there's gonna be spots out of the water where these high trees are. In uh, Wisconsin and most of the Midwest, trees don't grow in water. So 
if you have actual standing trees, not tag alders and stuff, and not, uh, but actual trees, you're gonna have a little high spots. So I figured there'd be high spots over here and I would cause a little bedding area here and it's a pretty good tangle, pretty thick area surrounded by water. Be great for some of those sound based beds. And here's the first one. I mean, you can see that the dirt is packed down in a way that this has been bedding for years and years and years. You can see it's been used. I don't see a rub around it, but there were some rubs over there on the, and over there and the trails coming in and out of here. And it looks like underneath these big trees here, there's some high spots, probably some beds. So. No bunny rabbits back here for me to shoot. I was hoping to eat one for uh, New Year's Day. Whoa. But uh, they probably don't like the water and I didn't think it was this wet back here. It is pretty wet back here. Especially for a drought year. Ah. Ah. That's a historical rub right there. That's a good sign. There's some bigger trees over there. That might form like a little island. We'll go over there and we'll check that out because I mean if you look at that one tree it's pretty big diameter so is that one. There could be a little like a uh, high area over there. And uh, right here in the trail going over there is a halfway decent rub. It's interesting because up here it's dried out from like September, but down there you can see where it's orange and was uh, not too long ago. Probably uh, mid-November. This uh, tag brush, I mean, when, when they first rub it, it's orange like that. That stays like that for you know, like 30, 40 days, and then it starts to really turn white and dry out. But you can kind of judge it by how orange it is, how bright that orange is, you know, if the shavings are still laying on top of stuff or if they're, you know, buried. Coming into these beds here, this looks like a better area. I mean, these heavy trees, this is kind of what I was looking at from the distance. It looked like there's gonna be a little island of, you know, a tiny island here and there is. And looking here, there's a giant historical rub. And there's some fresh bark missing on here and some claw marks on here. So I think something might have tickled it. But that, hard to be positive. Yeah. Ah, look at that. Fresh tracks in the bed. Goes from bed to bed to bed like he was trying to figure out where to bed. You see how he walks right into each bed? All three of them here. And I think there's a good reason for that. I see that quite a bit. I'll see a buck, I'll be tracking him, and he'll go out of his way to go to bed. And he'll walk in and stand in, stand in a position where you'd see him lay down. And then what he does, is he smells the wind or something and decides, nope, this isn't safe today, and he moves on. So uh, maybe we find the bed that he laid in, maybe we don't. I'm sure it's around here, right around here someplace. Yeah, you see he stood in each one of these beds right here. I would say, oh yeah, there's a rub over there that's fresh. Not huge, but it's fresh. So, um... Oh, there's a fresh one there too, that's a little higher. And the branch is broken off the back. I would say this is definitely a good spot for a buck if he's in this area to lay. This looks like about the best spot I've seen around here. And a lot of people would overlook this. It don't look like a heck of a lot. But I'd be willing to bet this is used a lot. I and mean, that one's worn in. You can see where the back goes up against that tree. And you can see that that's worn down in the ground from years of use, even here. You can see how the bed itself is worn down into the ground from years of use. And here, and there. This little high spot's a good spot. Now you can kind of, you know, you can kind of see how a deer would want to went bed there if the wind was coming from back there. See that? He'd probably bed here if the wind's coming in like this or over here. Maybe he moves over here when the wind's blowing from that way. So he's got this grass against his back. 
you do that little bit of detective work and you kind of figure things out. Now again, this rub is pretty dry, but look, there's a fresh nick right there that's tacky. Just a small one, pretty fresh. And there's tracks in the beds. So I'm saying uh, they're bedding in this area pretty late. Probably not right now, but they're still looking at the beds, right? Let's take a look at that rub over there. See how old that is. <coughs> yeah, that's from earlier in the year. But he's got a route through there, route through there, route through there, route. There's a heavy route. This is a real heavy route right here. And that goes right over to a little island that's full of oaks. So a guy could sit by those oaks when those oaks are dropping and this buck would make it to you in daylight. That's only 75 yards. Cool beans. So I got a ticket that that buck was better in there somewhere because you see I chased something through here. All the ice is busted up from a running deer. See that? Chased them right through here. Followed deer tracks into this bed. There was a deer here and there's running tracks out of it. It's still somewhat warm. Looks like we uh, had one deer bedded back here. So you see where his back was? He's looking downwind. The wind's blowing through here like this. You can see a historical rub telling you that Buck's bed here. Now one thing to take note, there isn't any other beds around. This is a solitary animal. And it's a big animal, it's a big bed. But the track wasn't very big. Could have been a doe track. Now, one thing people don't understand is does will use buck beds when the bucks aren't there. If it's a solitary doe. When we talk about doe bedding, where they bed in more open areas, bed in circles and stuff like that, it's usually groups, doe groups. If a doe is solitary, it, it might bed like this. Could have been a young buck, could have been a doe. Either one way, it's not one of my targets. So this deer, presumably a buck, is bedded facing that way, wind to back, with this blockade here. And he can actually see through here a little bit, so he can see something coming. You know, it's a little better sound-based area, but he can see something quite a ways in there coming through that brush so right now this bed is probably wind based he's bedding there when the wind is blowing the way it's blowing he ain't bedding here facing that pile of brush the other way but i would say that if this bed is used earlier in the season which it probably is it's probably sound based early season when this grass is really high but either way I mean, you can see the bed's been used a few times. You can see it's a higher elevation, a spot they'd pick if they come in here. But I don't see the heavy wear. I don't see the dead grass or worn to the dirt. So I'm assuming that the uh, chances of the deer being bedded here when you come here are pretty slim on this spot. But altogether, when you put it with the other beds, you got a pretty good number of beds in here. I mean, it's just what I've shown on the video, but there's probably a hundred beds around that oak island which tells you there's pretty good chance one of them has a buck you're after in it that's going to come towards that island the day you're there especially if you stack the odds and you come when you, when you know that those beds are being used which is september-ish when the acorns are dropping on an acorn year so it's walking the edge of this uh transition and this tree caught my eye this real big tree Came over better right at the base of it, like I would expect. And I see plenty of browse around it. This book has been used a little more recent. Everything's packed down a little better. Ah, oh, there's a small rub in it, and that rub's a lot fresher. It kind of looks like in November. It's actually still a little tacky. So 
So there's the big tree that's got that bed underneath it. I get over here and this little tiny tree has a bed underneath it. And you look in that tree's got a bed underneath it. I can see from here. And if you look under that one and that one, there's probably beds under those too. So here's a bed here. Obviously sound based. I mean, it's just gonna be able to hear anybody coming from any direction. And here's the rubs right in the bed. Fairly old rubs. The detective in me is telling me September would be a good time to hunt this when the oaks are dropping because uh, most of these rubs are dried up. But there is some sign that there's deer in here now. So I just think that the deer probably bed in here most of the year, but the primary time when they're really marking these beds like they're competing for them is probably early season. You know, when bucks uh, rub around bedding, they rub in the beds. If you notice, all the rubs we're looking at are right in the bed. Here's the bed, there's the rub, right? If you see rubs on the trails going alongside of the beds, it's a good possibility they're doe beds and it's a buck marking it because he's in rut. What you want to see is that rub right in the bed. Look at that, I almost missed that one. There's a giant bed there too, better than this one actually. Look at how heavy that one is, worn into the ground. Yeah, I can see a rub on the other end of it too. So that one's got a rub in it too. But uh, these, these bucks will get real competitive over these bedding areas. And they'll mark them, hey, this is mine. That's what that rub is. That isn't a rub to track those, it's a rub to mark this as his. And now if we follow this back to the, to the oak trees back there, there's gonna be some rubs in there too. And those rubs are going to be saying, hey, this is my food. These, you know, and they're going to be September rubs. And now in that food source, we'll probably see if there's any bigger rubs. You know, giant ones telling us that there's a bigger buck bedding out here. And those real big bucks don't always mark these beds because they don't have to. Because there are probably only one or two deer that are five, six years old out here. Probably only one if there is one and that buck Doesn't need to tell the others. He's the big buck because he is the big buck and they know it So the younger ones usually mark more and are more competitive But the big one will mark the food because he'll be like you don't eat my food kind of thing Here we got a heavier bigger tree in the middle of all this crap out of the water There's a pile of poop right there In a bed bed over there Bed over here, there's a very dry rub there with a broken branch next to it that's old and a little tiny mark of a rub where the antlers were hitting on that tree right here. You see this is busted from rubbing too. You see all the tips on the dogwoods bitten off. But you can tell that this was a long time ago they were bedding here. I'm sure this was August and September. But it just adds to the whole detective work that this is a early season bed in there. Even though there's deer in here now, I think you want to kill a big buck out of here. Early season. There's so many people that tell me, I'm saving my best spots for rut. What do they even mean by that? I've got best spots for early season, best spots for late season, best spots for rut. I mean, if you're one trick pony, you're gonna limit how, how much you can kill deer because I'll tell you what, when you look at my walls, the very biggest and oldest bucks came from early season, came from September. So I'm excited to see September bedding because that's when those big bucks are off their guard and they come in a little earlier. So I think I got this figured out. It's going to be a trek to get back here. But uh, I think it's worth a hunt. We're going to wrap this up now and I'm going to head back. No bunnies for... New Year's Eve uh, dinner, so I'll probably have to take Carol out for tacos. Maybe I should have brought a fishing rod. Not much bunny territory in here.
probably not worth carrying a shotgun around in this crap. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. See you next time.